This will be a tutorial on how to create your own money. We're in the middle of the lab where students are making their own type of currency from their own designs. Now they have to use their face and make it look exactly like it's been etched, like our money is. Now your mileage may vary on this. This is project specific. Now the way money operates is that somebody by hand etches into metal plates. Now these plates are used in like a printing press format to rapidly press ink onto special paper, which becomes our money. We want to emulate or mimic this effect, and it's pretty quick and dirty, um, a little complicated, but again, um, this is mainly for the students in class. Right now, I'm going to be using an image that's in RGB mode, like full color. We want it to look like this. Now we can't jump from RGB to bitmap. We have to piggyback off of grayscale. So we're going to first convert the mode to grayscale, and then from there, to a bitmap, which will give us the effect that we want, and then back into color, we have to piggyback off of grayscale again, and then once we bring it back into RGB mode, we need to add any colors to it, because colors are discarded at this stage here. So let's search for an image. Looking around, I found this one. There is not very much light in it, there's a lot of gray, a lot of black, and I want to show you how you can correct that if, say, the photos that you take of yourself aren't looking quite so crisp. Now when you get your photo and you want to create that etch, make sure it's in its own file. If you have your money file and you've been working so hard to put the money together, uh, this will impact the entirety of that file. Just lassoing out some of the unnecessary space. We're still going to see the fingers in here, but this is just again really to show you the process. To get rid of all of the gray, simply do what's called a Levels Adjust, that's Command L, or go to Image Adjustments and Levels. And if we look at our little histogram here, a lot of black, a lot of middle gray, not much white. So I'm going to grab the little white arrow and bring it in to brighten the piece up. The effect is done by the computer by looking at where are the grays and the darks. White does not receive any of the effect, and so that will create all the texture and value that you will need in order to have the effect. You don't want to blow out the image and the features. Again, right about here might be just fine. Get some brights and some middles. So now that we've got our file, we want to convert it into a grayscale image. I'm going to go into grayscale. It's going to ask you to flatten. Just say yes. Once we convert it to a bitmap, in order to get that halftone etch effect, it's going to flatten it anyway. And now, once it's been converted into grayscale, again, go to image mode, and then grayscale. Now we have bitmap available. Just select bitmap. We're going to be presented with a couple of windows here. First, we look at our input. That means what is the state of the file that's being converted, and it's a 300 pixel per inch file. We want its output, meaning when it becomes converted to a bitmap, we want it to match the input. So make sure that says 300. Now down here, the method, there's many different types of bitmaps that are offered in Photoshop. Select halftone screen. That's basically many lines or dots. Once you get that, say OK. Now it's going to ask you what kind of halftone screen do you want? And this is where you're going to finagle things a little bit. We're going to go back and forth. So frequency is how often the effect occurs per inch. The angle is how the effect will be. And then finally the shape. We want an edge. And so I'm going to choose line. So let's start with something really high. Let's try 50 and say OK. And then bam, you might be able to see it on your screen but it created a large amount of lines where the different value shapes were. And play around with it. Right now, I can't really tell much up close. Uh, the lines are very small. So I'm going to undo, and that's going to take me back to where the grayscale mode change was, and just go back to bitmap and play around with it. So 300 inch, half tone screen, OK. Let's go down to, say, 35. And getting close, look a little bit better. Try it again. Let's make it really low, like five, and see what happens. Holy smokes, only five lines per inch. And that's what frequency means, how frequent or often the effect occurs. Let's go with 35, and then I'll take it to the next level. When I zoom in close, see how grainy and chunky all these strokes are? I want to soften it up a little bit, so I'm going to hit it with what's called a blur, a Gaussian blur. Go to Filter, go to Blur, select Gaussian Blur, and in general, play with the radius of the blur effect. You know, if you go too high, you're going to lose the lines, and if it's too low, no effect. 
I'd say anywhere between, you know, a half to one pixel. And let's say I'm going to do like, say, 0.8. That looks pretty good. It softened the etch. So let's grab it and drag it into the next file. But oh wait, there's all this white pixel information. That's going to be problematic. All I want is just the black line and no white pixels. That's OK. I'll show you how to fix that. Go to your Channels tab. If you don't see the Channels tab, you can go to Window and Channels. Now at the bottom of the Channels tab, you can see down here this little dotted circle. This, calls, this is called Load a Channel as a Selection. If I click on it, it will select every white pixel in this layer, which is good. We want to get rid of the white. So now that you can kind of see the marching ants moving around, I'm going to hit Delete, Bye Bye White. There's a little problem, though. We've lost some quality to the black etch effect. Some of those pixels were deleted as well. So now that I still, I still have the marching ants, all right? This is still a selection. I'm going to go to Select inverse. And what that does is tell the computer to select the opposite of all of that negative space. Now all of the black pixels are selected. I'm going to grab a brush, a hard-edged brush. I'm going to color it black and draw over the top of it. It's going to be confined to within that selection zone around those black pixels, but you see it just darkened up the image. So this is after, before. And now we can even see the etch effects on the cheeks. So now deselect the image, and now we've got a nice, fresh, clean, etched face. Now if you want to add color to this so that it's not a solid black, but rather a different color of ink, you can come up here to Lock Transparent Pixels. It's located at the top of the window where the layer window's at. Just click on that, and that locks every pixel that's see-through. Anything else that has pixel information is fair game. It's going to paint directly on top of those black pixels. So you can give a pretty cool like, uh, like halftone effect in here. You can play around with different types of ink as well. Let's get like a navy blue with a soft-edged brush and blend that in. Let's see what happens. Maybe transition from navy blue to blue to maybe like the complement, uh, which would be orange. Let's see what happens when we try that. So it makes for a pretty fun effect that you can use by locking transparent pixels. So this has been a tutorial on how to convert a photograph into a black and white etch and also how to color that etch effect. Hope you guys found this helpful. This will be mostly applicable to my students in the graphic design class that I'm teaching, so your mileage may vary. I look forward to seeing you guys in class. Take care.